I wanted to say that one of the special things about India, and this is especially for those of you from overseas, so can we have the people who are from outside India stand up so we can applaud you? Thank you for being at TEDx ISB. We have the Americans, I know we have a Brazilian. Who else do we have? Where else? France. So see, we have the world at TEDx. And now I'd like to have a bigger applause for the very supportive and brave men in the audience at TEDx Women. Please, can the men stand up? Stand. Yes. Thank you. It is truly the, the strength that you bring to the table that allows a balance, the balance that Dr. Sareen talked about, or the balance that we all know is required in any work or even at home. So, I wanted you to look at this picture for a minute, and I wanted uh, one of the people from overseas to tell me, which one is the woman in the picture? Which is the women's feet? Which pair of feet belongs to the woman? Quickly. The elephant, right? Because she has the anklets. And then the person in the skirt, can you believe that that's actually the man? Because he's wearing a dhoti. So India has, takes whatever concepts come and actually adds so much more dimension with all these nuances that if you open your eyes and just look at the space between men and women, which you kindly try titled the space between estrogen and testosterone, we actually have a lot of answers to make that come together beautifully. So my talk is going to be about how can we take some of the ways that we have been created and apply that behavior so that we can help each other grow better. And so I'm going to start by telling you quickly about differences in the brain. You already know that we have physical differences, right? But you know what, if I gave you one man's brain and one woman's brain, and are there any doctors in the audience today? Doctors, can you say yes? There you are. Only one? Okay, so we have one doctor. So if I make any scientific mistakes, you have to ignore me or tell me after the speech. So the neurological brain differences that exist, if I showed you the man's brain and the woman's brain, there would actually be a difference in size, in weight, in the way that the brain has the waves that it does on it. And inside, it also has differences in the chemistry. So the woman's brain has more oxytocin, which is a bonding chemical. Guess why? We are intuitive, we bond, we want to include everybody. And the man's brain will have more of the testosterone, which is more of an aggression chemical. So there might be ma many more opportunities to be direct, to get on with what we have to do, and so on. Now, if you look at the blood flow between the man's brain and the woman's brain, there's 20% more blood flowing in a woman's brain. So what does that mean? It's pretty active. The woman's brain is always active. So if you take two pieces of the brain, the two brains on the two sides, and you look at the way the wires are crossed, usually in a man's brain, it goes from point A to B to C to D. That's how the neurons work. But in a woman's brain, it goes from here to there and there to here. Bzz, 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 it's all over, crisscrossed wires. You're laughing, yeah? That means that you understand what I'm getting to. So if you look at these crisscrossed wires and this logical wire way that the two brains have been made, you'll begin to understand why we behave in a particular way as well. OK, here's a test. Man's brain can also go into a quiet mode very easily. Why? Because if you see an MRI, and this was not me. These were professors from Rutgers who came to our Harvard Kennedy School, on whose women's leadership board I served, and I used to attend those programs. And they came and showed us two MRIs of a man's brain and a woman's brain at rest. And the man's brain at rest is at rest. And the woman's brain at rest is going bzz, 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 And that's the rest. 
So what will you do? Have you ever asked your husband or your brother or your significant other, um, what are you thinking today? What are you thinking? And what does he say? Nothing. And you go, nothing? Really? Nothing? How can you think nothing? Hey, guess what? He is thinking nothing. Men can zone out and think nothing. So if you can begin to see that this is how it works, then maybe you, we can speak to each other in a different language. And speaking of language, in the woman's brain, left and right hemisphere controls language. Whereas in a man's brain, only left controls language. So if you take the total number of words, women speak, write, hear, it's 50% more than the man's brain. That's why we speak so much. Have you been to a meeting where women are running it and are coordinating it? It's a lot of talk. Have some of the men realized, wait a minute, we're off this topic. Where are we? Why is all this talk going on? Don't blame us. Our brains work that way. <laughs> and when, I, when the man is, is saying, you're asking him a question, have you ever asked something? And then he's going, he's not answering you. Or, and then you think, let me talk to him more. And you say more. But I want it this way. I think it's that way. You know what you're doing? You're zoning him out further and further. Because the more you do that, he's going to zone out more. So with this knowledge, any objections can be afterwards at lunch. <laughs> with, with that knowledge, what can we do? Hey, let's leverage our strengths. Let's take that multitasking woman, all of you, and put you into those boardrooms. Let's try to break that glass ceiling. Let's encourage the women to go up there because, hey, well, guess what? We need that woman who's intuitive, who includes everybody, who makes the team work easy, who fits into a new team with less resistance, who's not there macho to show what she needs to be first, who is a little bit more family. But you know what? We need the men. Where's the agenda? What's the data orientation? Let's get to it. Let's get to it. We need the man too. So can we do this gender balance? Because that really is gender intelligence. So the men in the room will have to encourage your women to do the three things that I'm going to share with you. And the women, if you like my story, then please do these three things. One, the bridge from no confidence to becoming confident is simply taking one first step. It just means, and that's what all our panelists must have done. We all take one step. I myself was a blubbering housewife that knew a few languages. And I decided when I met Joanne Husky that I wanted to do something different. And she said, let's start a relocation cross-cultural training company. I didn't know what that was. 17 years ago, India had just liberalized. There was nothing about relocation. And so we had to take that first step. Taking that first step meant getting into the difficult field of real estate, renting houses. And the word broker in India has a really negative connotation. So you don't come from a, you know whose family I'm from, and then become a broker. But I had to do that because 50% of our revenue even today comes from housing the expats. So we better understand what the expats need. So by the time I got to that level, the first step that I had taken, we discovered Nokia had come to set up cell phones in India. And this was the head of the Nokia team. And while we got him into a nice kurta and everything, Yukka Lekhtela, who brought Nokia to India, had some of the most difficult experiences of finding a home and settling down. And taking that first step meant creating a process by which expats were able to now understand that not all brokers are dishonest, not all brokers are out to get more money because you're a foreigner. So we were able to help do that. So that's the first lesson. Second lesson, OK, so I'm becoming confident. But you know what? I still want to be Miss Perfect. I have to be perfect mom, perfect wife, perfect hostess, perfect dresser, perfect boss, and everything. You know what? It's not possible. If you can keep some of the people happy some of the times, hey, all you women, you better applaud because you've done a great job. And if the men, yes, applaud. Are you keeping some people happy sometimes? Then you're doing great. Because you know what? One thing I could not do at all, and I'm still a rotten cook. I cannot cook to save my life. This is the India Immersion Center where we now run cookery classes for, for expats to learn Indian cooking. But I can't cook. 
So how difficult that was, you know, for me, because my husband would say in the first year of our marriage, and yes, yes, this was not an arranged marriage. I had fallen in love and chosen to marry this man, and I had made this transition going from Bombay to Chennai. He would say, I don't know, this doesn't taste like my mother's cooking. I'd go, darn, stop. You know how you don't want to be compared with your, his mother's cooking? But very soon I realized that's not important. That's not what I was cut out to be. So accepting it was good. Because look, I had two children. They grew up without any cooking by me. But do they look underfed to you? <laughs> no, right? They grow up fine. Thank you, I'll tell them that you applauded. Because today they're 20 and 30. But if I had sat when they were one and two and thought, God, I better improve my cooking, sure, I would have done something nice, but I don't know, maybe we wouldn't have contributed to the world as much as we all really should. And we are very stressed in India. You know this AC Nielsen study, everybody, right? The most stressed country in the world, is it Spain? You're from Spain. For women, in this study of 22 countries, Spain came out five. Brazil, hey, I had a Brazilian there. You are number four. You're the fourth most stressed women in the world, by the way. And Russia is above you, three. Mexico, but guess who tops the list? Good old India. Why? Because we are leapfrogging into a future without letting go of the past tradition. We want to hold the Indian roots, yet we want to fly on global wings. So every festival must have the exact Laddu that has to be made. Laddu is the Indian sweet. Besan ka laddu for karva choth. That's, that's some sort of a festival for long life of the husband. Great, but what about my long life? I don't know to do the laddu, right? So can you please give yourself a break? Can you go buy those laddus in a shop? And if you have to convince your mother-in-law, put it on a plate and say, I made this. These little lies are okay. You know what? We have to do it. And I'm afraid that my lawyer friend will take me to court by saying, you can't do this, it's defamation. But if she saved my friend Kushbu, she can save me. So I wanted to say the last thing, which is already something that Dr. Sarin pointed out. I must have copied it from your presentation. We do need to leverage our natural and learned skills. So what I will say here is, I was just a maybe an upper middle class person from Bombay. My parents were working. I had learned languages. I had realized that I liked something, I had discovered something called cultural intelligence as being a very important part of behavior to make business work. So I went off and started to learn about this. I had a natural flair to connect with people around the world or with others. But you know what? You can't just say, I have a flair, I can do it. You need to work on your own skill. So I did that. I was a rotten speaker. I could not speak. My knees would shake if I came up and spoke to you. Even now I'm nervous, by the way. I was nervous even in the morning. But once I'm up here and I'm sharing a story, I've learned to get over my fear. So if you can learn and grow your natural strengths, whatever they are. You may decide you want to be a jewelry maker, you may decide you want to be an IT entrepreneur, you may decide I'm going to be in a corporation making a big difference to an HR department. Pick up your skill and learn more about it. This is a picture of me with the CEO of Aston Martin, the new Craig uh, Daniel movie, James Bond, you saw the Aston Martin. But this is the new Aston Martin that they're going to be launching in, uh, in Germany. It's called the Signet. It's the little swan. And today, if I'm able to stand tall, and he's like six feet, four, five inches, and I'm this little sari-toting woman telling him about Indian business culture, it's because I worked on it. So whatever you choose, please work on that strength. This was the BMW team which came when they came here to set up in, in Chennai. And this was the board. And I was scared to deal with the BMW board. But at the end of the day, the world is ready to adapt to India too. They're learning our namaste. And so if we can work on making sure that we take our skill and then show it to others and work on it, then that's the answer. So I'd love to leave you just with that quick recap. Confidently say, I can, then not all perfect is, use your thumbs, okay, 
Don't use it for liking on Facebook alone. Use it for OK. And then please hone your skills so that you can add real value to the world. I would love to leave you with the last little gesture. So can you put your hands together? I'm going to put this down. Can you put your hands together and make an X, like the TEDx? The X, OK? You have your thumbs making the X. Some of you have the right thumb over the left thumb as the X, like me. We're all the clever people. <laughs> the others, good luck. But actually, that's not true. Now, take your hands out and put the other thumb to make the X. Mm. Did you make the X with the other thumb for TEDx? Is that a bit, how does it feel? Uncomfortable. What do you feel like doing? Oh, I want to go back to my first thumb. I don't like this thumb, right? You know what? Every skill you learn is like this. It is a question of discomfort with the new because you are used to doing something a particular way. Please practice the other thumb. Today, whole lunch, you must hold the other thumb. By the end of the evening, it will begin to feel a bit better. You won't have to instantly change to the other thumb. You will be able to hold it a bit longer. And as time goes, you'll become more comfortable with a new way that you decide to adapt for your own success. Thank you very much for listening to me.